Hey y'all, so I'm all the way in the back of my yard, the back corner of my yard, because I've been letting some poke plants grow back here. Um, in the springtime, you can take the leaves when they're just little bitty, when they first come up, you can pick them and boil them, pour the water off, and boil them again, pour the water off, and the third time you boil them, you put like a little salt pork in there, um, cook them up, eat them that way, or you can fry them up into like little, um, they call them poke salad patties. I've been eating those since I was little. They're so good. I love it. But anyway, um, <laughs> this is a poisonous plant. Um, so I don't let Boo back here in this area of the yard, but um, the reason that I let these grow is for these right here, the poke berries. Um, which is poisonous. This plant, I believe, is in the nightshade family, I think. Don't hold me to that, but I think I'm right about that. Um, the berries here actually make a very pretty ink. Um, depending on the acidity of your ink, it kind of ranges in color from about this color to kind of a purpley color. Um, yeah, but like I said, y'all, if you're going to do this, use caution and don't be letting little kids around it. Um, it has killed people who's consumed it and like the berries or the leaves that's not cooked properly and didn't know. At this stage in the plant's life, you, you can't eat the leaves now. As it gets bigger, it becomes more toxic. But, um, yeah, so... Yeah, just be aware of that. It is, uh, it is poisonous. Um, but I don't plan on eating any of it. Um, so it's, it's alright y'all. I've done this a long time. Um, and do wash your hands. Um, and you might want to wear gloves when you pick these berries. Because, you know, your skin is an organ. You do absorb through your skin. Um, and not to mention, these will stain you. So, yeah. So I'm not recommending any of you do this. I'm just taking you along for my journey all right all right y'all what we're doing here is making the pokeberry ink which is a beautiful ink now it does oxidize some um, and the color of the ink will kind of vary depending on the acidity of the juice um, Oh, let me see. I'm trying to think. I think that the more acidic it is, the more of a kind of a purplish color it is. Um, this is a very pretty, pretty pink. Um, if you leave this ink in sunlight, y'all, it will fade and it will turn brown. Just know that. Okay. So, also let me say that I have had varying results with this over the years following the exact same recipe so I suppose there's a lot of different factors that's involved um, you know I'm not an expert ink maker <laughs> so usually I make an extremely small batch and I freeze it and then I take out what I need well, I don't, I'm not going to do that. I, I haven't done that for the last few years because, um, boo, he, he can open the doors and stuff. Um, and I just don't want something like this. You know, I know, you know, it's not edible, but he wouldn't. And you do not, you do not want this around, um, children or pretty much anybody that doesn't know exactly what it is or that it can be accidentally picked up um, and mistaken for some yummy berries because it's poisonous. But you can see, look how pretty that is. I collected my berries in this jar. This is a jar that I only use for ink making. Um, I keep this and all of my ink making supplies, um, anything that may be poisonous I keep it locked up it's actually in a locked up box so that nobody can get in it but me so all right so I've got my berries and I've got my little strainer here you can actually put a cheesecloth and put the berries in the cheesecloth and squeeze them out just make sure that you have 
um, gloves on. You know, your skin, as I have said before, is an organ and it absorbs stuff. You do not want to be absorbing this in your skin. So what you'll do, and being very careful because these are berries and they will squirt y'all, um, just smush them. Smush them down on here so you can get your juice out. And I'm actually over on one of my craft tables and it's not the most sturdiest table in the world as far as, you know, bouncing and stuff. So I am sorry, y'all. See, we're starting to get drips down in there. One thing to know about if you do use the cheesecloth though, y'all, um, you will lose which you're, you're going to lose some of this anyway on your containers and stuff, but you are going to lose some of your liquid in that cheesecloth. The table that I'm doing this on has plastic over it. Um, you just, you just want to make sure you get this all cleaned up very well. My boo isn't isn't home. Actually, I'm the only person at home right now. Um, so there's no chance of anybody picking this up and thinking it's something that it's not. Now, when you harvest your berries, you want them like I showed you in the first clip. You're going to want them plump and round and very dark kind of black looking um, that's when you're going to get your prettiest color you're not going to want to get them when um, they're starting to shrivel up if you smush one of those um, the berries that are starting to shrivel you'll be able to see that the color is actually a bit of a brownish color where it's already kind of um, changing So you're wanting to get this pretty pink color. Now there's different ways to do this. The way that I'm going to do today is I'm going to use um, non-iodized salt and um, a little bit of vinegar. You can do this and ferment it, um, which is you take your juice, you put it in an airtight container, and you basically um, let the natural yeasts ferment um, all of the sugars out, which is turning the sugars in these berries into alcohol. And the alcohol, if it's high enough, will preserve your ink. I have done this before and I have mixed results. So like I said, there's a lot of different variables that goes into this. Um, one of these days I will sit down and I will do all the different ways and try to nail it down. But <laughs> for right now, you know, I just, I make this in extremely small batches. So, um, I, it's not like I need a whole lot of it and I don't need it preserved for a very long time. But this is a good project to do this time of year because these berries are ripe this time. Okay. And you can get them plentifully. Um, and where you would find these, you can find these like in areas where they've um, dug up the soil. They're found in poor soil. Um, a lot of times this is one of the very first uh, weeds that will start growing back in an area. Look at all those seeds in there now. I got a lot of seeds and I've got a lot of juice. So now that I've squished most of my juice out of here, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going, and this is very messy so I'm not gonna do this on camera because I'll have it everywhere. As you can see, it's already kind of splashed out. I'm going to get my little piece of cheesecloth and I'm going to squeeze this out. So I will be right back, y'all. Sorry, guys. I decided I'd go ahead. Why not? I've already made a mess. Um, this is double-layered cheesecloth. And you 
you're just going to gently squeeze it. You don't want um, pulp or anything to get forced through the holes in the fabric. After you do this, you can do a, um, a third strain where you can let this run through a coffee filter. Um, I'm not gonna do that. I, I don't find that it's necessary, but you can. All right, y'all, so here it is. Let me see if I can carry, I don't wanna get this on me. Um, here it is, all bubbly and beautiful down in there. Look how pretty that is. Um, now to this, like I said, this is probably a half of a cup or so. Um, so this isn't exact science, y'all. So to this, I'm going to add a half of a teaspoon of salt. Fine grain salt, y'all. If you put big grain salt in there, it's going to be harder for it to dissolve. And I'm going to put in about a teaspoon of vinegar. Now, you do not want to leave this in this container because you all see how much space there is above this. There's a lot of air space in here. You want to keep your ink in an airtight container with as little amount of head space or air above the ink as possible. Um, now you can test this out and see how it writes. Um, this ink works best on like a um, um, like a brush if you're using a brush to write with um, you can use a dip pen for this I have an old dip pen that I use um, one thing you might want to do though is um, dissolve just a little bit and you have to experiment with this to see what is about right. But you get some gum arabic, dissolve it in just a little bit of hot water until you have like a uh, kind of a syrupy consistency and mix that in this ink. And what that does is kind of make the ink stick to your dip pen a little bit better so that when you're writing it kind of sticks to the pen and it, and it just doesn't just off your off your pen I don't know if y'all know what I'm talking about um if you have a dip pen if your if the consistency is too thin of the liquid when you dip it and go to write with it your paper or whatever you're writing on will pull all that liquid right off of it it won't stick to the pen at all so you won't be able to do a line um, Regardless, though, of the consistency of it, whether it's too thin or not for a dip pen, you can always use a fine brush. Um, so that's always a possibility. I've about got my, I've almost got my salt dissolved in there. I can't feel it in the bottom. Um, and you should have gloves on for this, y'all. I'm being very careful, but... You can still get it on you. You don't want this in your eyes, your mouth. You really don't want it on your skin, period. Um, I'm going to... Look how pretty that is. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my gloves back on. I'm going to transfer this over into a container. Now, the container you store this in, you want it to be uh, like a colored container. You don't want it to be clear. Uh, if you do use clear, make sure you store your ink in a, uh, a dark place. You don't want the light 
hitting this because it will degrade the color of your ink. It'll bleach it. Um, yeah, so it'll be interesting to see exactly how long this takes before it turns brown on me. Um, I've also noticed different types of papers. Now, I have not researched a whole lot to see, but I don't know if like an acid-free paper versus an acid paper uh, makes a difference in how quick the color of the ink turns. Um, but I have noticed with the same batch of ink writing on different papers, uh, I get different results. <laughs> so, like I said, there's a lot of variables here and nothing that I do hardly is exact. So, I, I can't really pin down exactly um, what is causing that. Oh my goodness, I got my door open. Sorry, y'all. Um, yeah, so I'm going to put this into a container and then we'll give it a try and see how it works just like this. Alright guys, so I brought this over to my work surface and please excuse it, it's a mess. But as I said, it's my work surface, so my work area. Um, this is the ink. Now, I do have some colored um, non-light permeable um, containers, but I chose to put it in this one just so that I can kind of watch it, um, keep an eye on it, see if it molds on me, see if it starts to change color on me. Um, I'm going to probably do a follow-up on this, but I will probably, what I'll do is post pictures on Instagram. Um, and I always put my Instagram down below. But as you can see, I've got this in a container. There's not a whole lot of air space between the ink itself and the top of the container. Um, like I said, you don't want a whole lot of air in there. Um, so let's see, let me take this off. I am going to wax this cork. Oh, come here. I am going to wax it just so the air can't get in and, you know, keeps my fingers dry. As you see here, there's some of the ink along this top layer here. Now, all I, I have added to this was the half of a teaspoon of salt and the, um, about a teaspoon of apple, of, um, regular white table vinegar. What I have here is a glass dip pen. I like these. These are easy to clean off. You just spray them with a little alcohol and wipe them down. So I'm going to dip my pen. And this ink does look like it's clinging very well, but these pens are designed. Do you see the swirls in the pen um, in the nib there? It's designed to kind of have like a capillary action to suck the liquid up along those lines. So it kind of holds on to your ink. Now, this ink here looks pretty good. See that? I'm not actually going to write anything because my handwriting, y'all, especially after I got into the profession that I'm in now, looks like drunk chicken scratch. So I'm not going to actually write for y'all. But <laughs> you can see... You can write with it. Um, get a little more here. It does feather out a bit, but if I had an actual, uh, some better paper, that would, it would help that. Um, this paper is just regular printer paper. It's not really made for dip pens and inks, but I use it for it. But you can see you can, you can use this um, without adding anything to it. Okay, all right y'all. So I'm gonna make me a little, I'll probably just leave 
keep this little scribblings here so in about a week or so I can check it out again and um, see how this has changed color see how that has changed color if it's molded on me as I've said before I've done this before I've done this different ways I've done it where you ferment it I've done it where you add alcohol to it um, and I get varying results with each one so <laughs> so um, I've made this before and it lasts a while um, just like this without anything else added to it just the salt and the vinegar um, and I've done this before and it mold uh, fairly quickly so just be aware of that if uh, you decide to do this and I'm not recommending anybody do this like I said in my videos anything that I do in my videos I'm just showing me do it and how I do it I'm not recommending it for anyone um, just a little thing to throw out there because you know I'm not gonna go into it because I don't want to be negative I, I don't want to be one I don't want to be negative but um, yeah there's there's some people out there that that's you know they just look for something to be negative about or accuse somebody of and I'm not one of those people and I just I don't so I'm not gonna get into it but anyway, like I said, this is just me doing it, not saying you should. So I'll save my little scribbled up piece of paper here. I'm going to keep it in a dark place, you know, because if this was in a book, it would be closed up. It would not be exposed to light. So I'm going to keep it in a dark place with my ink. I'm actually going to keep all of this um, locked up in my little lock box that I keep all of the stuff that, um, like this, that... Um, you know, boom, I, I keep my area here blocked off from him. He can't get over here anyway, but by chance, if he were to be able to get over here, um, I have certain items that is under lock and key, so he cannot get in. Actually, no one can get in it but, but me. So, yeah, so what I'll do, how you clean one of these pens is just spray a little like rubbing alcohol like you would buy at a drug store or any store really um, just spray some alcohol clean it off and there you go it's good as new all right you all I hope you all have a great day happy fall